This video will have a couple of examples of uh, the use of NX optimization, uh, design optimization here. This is going to be working with NX parameters, expressions, and uh, we're going to look at kind of the difference between local optimization algorithms and global optimization algorithms and uh, how they're used and uh, the kind of results they can give. Uh, we'll start with this one. This is a, a one-dimensional problem here. It, it is rotated, so it's kind of 3D, but but the, the problem is a one-dimensional problem here where we've got uh, a big big kind of lumpy body here, right? Uh, maybe a, a really creative bed knob or something like that. And, uh, the, and we extracted a copy of that. This gray one's a copy of the, of the original big one here and, and cut it off here at a datum plane. So we can move this datum plane around. And as we move this datum plane around, we're, we're going to have a face on the end of this body that's going to get bigger or smaller, right? Um, so just a just a creative way to, to create a little problem here that that we're we're going to try to minimize the area of, of this trimmed face uh, on this model here. And as you look at this, uh, of course, there are some areas in the model where that face is going to be very large, right? If we have the datum plane, uh, for instance, uh, over here in the big area, right? bring it over into into kind of into this region here then uh, that area of that face will be very very large and, and as we bring it over into you know the bottom we can we can see fairly readily that from the side here that, that this is the this is the global minimum right this is the the, the smallest minimum of all of the minima <laughs> so there's a, a local minimum in this valley right here and there's another local minimum here and another one over here right and uh, and, and so as we look at those various minima um, some of the algorithms will walk into one of those local valleys, right? And uh, and some of the algorithms will do a little searching first and and find some best candidates and and we'll we'll find the the, the global minimum here. So well, let's take a look at some of that. So if we start over here, right? We're kind of over in this this far valley over here. I have an optimization study set up in here that uses again that cut face area is the uh, the objective. We've told it to go to a target value of zero, so it's actually going to try to try to get to zero. Uh, we're going to obviously not quite get there because because of uh, the way the model's built, and that's fine. Uh, but the technique, right? We can head to zero. Um, we have a cut position here that's going to go between uh, 10 and 90 percent of the, the the height of this thing. So so just inside this valley to over here to just inside this valley, and uh, and no constraints on this particular one. So again, it's going to use that face value face uh, cut face area to to minimize. And uh, and uh, and we'll we'll head in there, right? So so the Powell algorithm right here and the conjugate gradient, these two in the middle, are local uh, optimizations, right? And so with Powell, for instance, um, it, Powell might make it over this little hill. We'll see, <laughs> but it's going to converge either into this last valley or into this third valley, one or the other of those, right? Uh, so as we kick this one off again, it's going to hunt hunt around just a little bit. Yeah, sure enough, it just ran downhill and and found that last valley right there. Okay. Which uh, which is a local out a local minimum right and that's that maybe maybe what you're after <laughs> right so that's uh, that's one possibility um, of course if we if we start this in a different place right if we grab this datum plane here for instance and uh, move it over and stick it in this valley right start it in that valley and then run that same study uh, in here again with with the Powell algorithm then we're going to watch that one and it's going to run downhill in that valley right and find that minimum. So that's uh, that's a, a local optimizer, uh, and again inside NX, that's that's the Powell and the conjugate gradient. Those are our local algorithms. These other four, uh, simulated annealing and global simplex and lexicographic and pattern swarm, are all uh, global algorithms uh, in this case, uh, and these are going to start with the sampling kind of around the design space to kind of look for some candidates for where it might want to start, uh, and then most of them will finish with a local uh, a local optimization based on based on the best candidate. They may look at a few alternate best candidates and, and try and, and see if they converge to the same place. But uh, with Pattern Swarm here, for instance, you'll see that sampling first. That's this little dancing it does at the beginning. And uh, fairly quickly, it, it's going to walk into that valley, kind of wander around, see if it uh, finds anything better, and, uh, and walk into the best answer there that it can find, right? And and we'll get that kind of an answer from, from, uh, from that algorithm. So that, that's pretty cool. The, the global there, again, takes a little longer because it's going to hunt around and, and do that initial sampling of the design space. All of them will do that, and, uh, and then it'll walk into uh, to the best answer it can find. Right? So that's a 1D uh, example, one, one variable uh, problem. 
this is a 2D example here that we're going into now. And uh, in here, we've got a similar situation where we've got uh, uh, this block over here. It's actually this block uh, over here on the, uh, uh, on the left that uh, is trimmed on two sides, right? We've got a trim on that far side. We've got a trim, or this, I guess that's the close side. That's the far side over there. Uh, trimming with these datum planes here. And, uh, and we're left with an edge, right? That's this vertical edge right here, actually. And, uh, and what we're going to try to do is minimize the length of that edge, right? Uh, and here again, if we look at this particular problem, you square that up and maybe grab the x z axis right there, rotate. Um, here again, we've got a few minima yeah, in this surface, right? There's there's one over here that's a well, and there's a valley right here. Uh, this one, obviously, looking at it, is the is the lowest, right? We can see that visually in this particular case. Uh, in your design problem, you, you may not be able to visualize where that is, what that minima is, or or the combination of variables that'll get you to that minimum. Uh, there's a hydraulic pump example that uh, that I'll I'll post here as well that you can look at. That's one where the uh, the answer is very non-obvious, <laughs> but it's a it's a three variable problem and and uh, you can take a look at that video. Um, the uh, in this case here uh, we we are able to do a direct measurement here, right? So we know that the right answer here is is 11.33 inches. That's the the gap between essentially this datum plane on the bottom, and uh, and that that blue surface. And so, so that's the answer we're going for, this 11.33, right? Um, so within that context, let's take a look at this and um, we will uh, see what it does. So, so we're starting over here kind of by this valley, right, in this particular one. And, and similarly, uh, if we grab this study, uh, again, we're using that cut edge height as the objective. And variables here are those X and Y offsets that are set up very similarly. It's, it's sitting at that 10-10 position right now. 90-90 you'll be over in this far corner over here. So it's it's going to vary within that design say, space or in you think of it as almost like a response surface here. Um, and we're going to be looking for the looking for the minima. Um, so with that, uh, if we start that with say Powell with a with a, a local uh, algorithm, it'll start here and again it's going to walk its way downhill uh, inside this valley, right? So uh, Powell kind of <laughs> runs one way until it finds a minimum and then runs the other way and and uh, it's just kind of how that particular algorithm uh, works you can see it see it do it but but as we said there it's going to walk down into that first valley that that it was uh, that it started in right um, similarly if we uh, if we take this guy and uh, move it over into the adjacent valley right uh, let me grab the right handle there we go let's put it over here right and now it's it's kind of sitting up near this valley, which is a little higher, right? And uh, starting on that side of the mountain up there. And in this one, similarly, if we, we use the local algorithm, uh, it's gonna gonna run downhill in this valley and and find the valley, uh, find the, the the bottom of this valley. Okay. So that's the local algorithm. Now, just like you would expect here, uh, if we take this same problem and switch this to say pattern swarm, that's that's a global you'll see that initial sampling start to happen, right? So it's going to now, with two variables, go out and do an initial sampling of the design space here. And uh, after it's done that sampling, again, it's going to start using its best guesses, uh, best samples there to, to be starting points. Uh, the pattern swarm likes to kind of look back every once in a while and make sure it's <laughs> made the right decision. And uh, so you'll see it, uh, you'll see it kind of drill in and then, and then then look back and make sure it's you know not 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 overlooked a, a better answer, uh, but eventually yeah it comes in and, and does find that uh, that global minimum over there right where we would expect it. So our distance measurement there to the bottom was eleven point three three yep, and sure enough that's our uh, that's our minima that we got to so. So yeah, this is an example there of the again a global algorithm the pattern swarm algorithm in a two D problem. Uh, this particular one, of course, is il illustrative so that you can uh, see see what it's doing. Uh, the reality of your design problem may be a, a 2D problem where you don't have the, the response surface that you're looking at, right? But you may have a design space out there where you have two variables that interact in interesting ways that, that produce uh, a nonlinear result or a non-monotonic result uh, where you may have some local minima out there that you're, that you're interested in uh, maybe avoiding the local minima and finding the global. So, hope this helps. Hope this is useful to you.